Just 103.9 TC here with you of uh, Jeremy for Jesus, Sons of Thunder. And we are back with the Basic Foundation Show. I know a lot of people have been asking me, like I said, we took a little breaks. We had the previous installments of the Industry Frustration, parts one through four. And we are going to make those available to you as well. But we thank you for listening to the show tonight. We thank you for everybody that's tuning in this evening. And uh, I, like I just told my brother, he's he my new co-host now. So I got to let everybody know he's Mr. Andy Mogul. Award winning three HPs records own Troy Edwards, sir. How you doing this evening? What's going on? Yeah, we we had another uh another notch to the belt, if you will. You know, another hat, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. I got a whole bunch of hats. <laughs> and uh we have our esteemed guest this evening. Uh he comes from X Music. And we so excited and so late to have him on this evening. And we have another than Steve Johnson. How you doing, sir? Man, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Man, it's, been, it's a pleasure to have you on, man. And gentlemen, we've been talking about frustrations of the industry. You know, we have a lot of artists out here that's trying to uh, break in the music industry. But, you know, as we talked about in the previous shows, we in the frustration. We talked about how artists are you know, not really using the tools and the information that's, you know, that's, that can equip them to be the artists they need to be. And also as well that... Um, you know, talking about some of the artist frustrations as far as the radio stations and trying to get their music out and things of that nature. But tonight, we're going to get down to the truth about today's music industry. And, uh, gentlemen, I just want to get your take on that. I you know starting with Troy. What, what, what do you think so far as far as the, today's uh, truth about the music industry? I mean, right now, you know, we had the old school way of doing things. We know we had the, you know, the A&Rs and, you know, the record labels kind of back in and, things like that. What are your views on today's music industry and where we need to go? Um, I think the music industry is basically not as great as it used to be, the music and quality, because I think the problem is a lot of artists are creating more shortcuts in in the music industry, and shortcuts don't always mean necessarily mean great. Mm -hmm. And I think another problem is artists are so quick to put out music and... Um, and they don't they don't even uh, get any feedback from people and and uh, and I think the artist problem is they're allowing the people in their circles and in the churches to think their music is hot. So once they go out there and deliver a lot of their music, they get very disappointed. Uh -huh. Wow, Steve, what are your views on that? I mean, I I, I one thousand percent agree with uh, Troy. I, I think also, um, I think that we have lost the heart of why we're doing our music, you know? So we're chasing so much, uh, trying to make charts that for real, um, at the end of the day, most of the people making charts still need a nine to five job to support themselves opposed to like getting back to the foundation of why we're doing it, you know, and doing music from the heart, doing music that, you know, that, you know, is right. That like, is edifying to God at the same time. It's, it's quality, you know, and I think that I agree with Troy. We've been shortchanging our music so that our masses can say that's hot opposed to saying, you know what, I don't even want to go that direction. I really want to go this direction, but but everybody else is going this direction, so I'm going to follow the crowd. 
Mm, that's good stuff. Well, if you just tuned in, of course, you're tuned into the Basic Foundation Show. And our discussion this evening is starting off the new series, The Truth About Today's Music Industry. We have a uh, what we call the Hot Seat Man coming in on the line right now. My brother uh, from CJB Radio is none other than Kevin James. How you doing, sir? Hey, how you doing, man? God bless. How you doing, Troy? What's going on, my brother? What's going on, man? Hey, nothing much, man. You know, got to stop by to be and help out the brothers, especially with what y'all talking about. Love it. Hey. Yeah, we also have uh, Steve Johnson from X Music on as well, sir. Hey, how you doing, Steve? I'm blessed, brother. I'm blessed. Yeah, um, you know, I, I was listening. What Troy was saying is definitely true mm -hmm. about the artists taking shortcuts to doing things. Um, you know, uh, me and you was talking earlier mm -hmm. about that, mm -hmm. um, the artists taking the shortcuts. Uh, they think they can go into a studio and just put down something and say, oh, man, I got a home studio. My studio is in my house. And, and getting away from the real quality of music, if you take one song and you put it up against some of these heavy hitters, this is, the quality of the music is totally, totally different. So um, Troy was definitely right. The artist needs to stop taking them shortcuts to getting it done just because it's there. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Let me ask this, gentlemen. I know me and uh, Kevin was talking earlier, and uh, we was talking about how the gospel music industry has separated themselves from the music industry as well. Um, do you guys concur with that? And I'll explain a little more after I hear y'all answers. Um, I definitely say that um, the gospel side of music has separated themselves from the music industry as a whole. Um, I had a chance to go to the uh, music uh, Future Music Summit not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And there was no representation from the gospel genre music there. Um, and, and then when I'm hearing from other people, they say the gospel music industry. They, they have made an industry separated from the music industry, from the gospel music industry. And I don't, I don't agree with that because I think they're separating themselves from the music industry as a whole. And that's why I feel that the gospel side of it is really hurting real bad, really, because they have separated themselves. So, okay. I mean, that's the way I feel about it. I have a lot more to say, but I want to hear what everyone else has to say also. Oh. Okay, Steve, I'm going to start with you. So what do you think about that, sir? I mean... I'll be honest with you, like, I, f I really feel that the gospel industry has been separate for for a long time. Like, um, um, the gospel industry for the longest time has always been on a 10-year um, behind what secular artists have been um, doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I really think that we've really, like, it, it is totally true. Like, the gospel industry is like their own little community. And if you're not connected with the key players that are in it, you really don't have a chance. You know, if you don't have the same sound and everything, and, and you're right, you're right. Um, most of the people in the secular industry really don't mess with the gospel industry. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, um, most, of, um, most of the people who I know who do secular, who are really doing secular, not the ones that, um, that, um, claim their secular artists, but still, you know, at, at 7-Eleven, I'm talking about the ones who are really, really making money. Right. They won't mess with a, uh, they won't mess with a gospel artist. Like they, they feel there's no money in it. There's no marketing in it. There's, um, mm -hmm. there's nothing that's appealing to their sound. So, I mean, I, I definitely agree. They've been running separate. And let me ask you this to you, cause you I'm, I'm sure you work with a lot of secular artists and everything as well. Do you think basically that the gospel music industry needs to take some notes from the secular music industry as far as like the marketing and, you know, coming together and things of that nature? What was the question for me? I, I asked Steve this, and I, and I asked you that as well, Troy. Okay. But I have Steve answer first. 
Okay. Oh, you said do, you said do I think that they um that we need to take notes from the secular industry? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, a- a- absolutely. I mean, um, not don't get me wrong. Not everything that the um the, the music ministry is a weird industry. Period. Because mm-hmm. um most artists, there's only a dime for artists that are actually financially being successful doing it. So everybody's trying to come up with their own um, remnant for how to make it and how how to get ahead. Um, what we do know is that whatever the church is doing is not working. You know, we, we, we're supposed to be reaching the masses, but really we're only reaching – our churches where our albums are being promoted first. And if you're part of a mega church, then you're part of good sales, Mm. but they're not going past their mega churches. If they're successful. And I definitely think um, production wise, um, we're talking about the level of um, music and, and it being quality sound. First of all, in the secular industry, an artist does not produce their own album. Mm. You know, that's why you hire a producer. You know, um, it's a difference from a producer from a writer. You know, Mm -hmm. he might be a great writer, but they hire a producer to produce the track before somebody's going to put money into it to market it. You know, Mm -hmm. but Christian artists, we don't do that. We, We do a live recording and we pick the 10 songs that we decided that we were going to do. They rehearse it three or four days in advance, and then they do a live recording, and then they, they put it out. You know, and a lot of times you can hear that there's a lack of creativity because they haven't really sat down and lived with it yet. And then you have people producing it who are, quote-unquote, not producers. They might be very talented. They may be potential producers, but at this present time, they're not producers yet. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting on that. And Troy, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think the um, I think the artists do. And you know, like I said, this is a kingdom business, and we always keep it kingdom. But you know, there's a business side, and then oh, you know, the artists like you know always say. Artists need to believe in what they're doing and what they're calling. Because if God called you to do this, why are we not moving harder as, as the secular artists? Like, you know, I always say when the secular artists, when you look at these um, reality shows and look at, about, about people's past and unsung, about artists that really believe in, 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 in their vision and they go out there, they jump in their car, they pack up everything and then go to New York, move to Los Angeles. They live where they have to live because they believe in their vision and where they want to go. Christian artists won't do that. And like I said, we, we have too many Christian couch potatoes that are sitting back waiting on the Lord when the Lord wants you to get up and move because... How do he expect you to give him something and you're not moving with it? I mean, a quarterback is not going to throw a wide receiver ball unless he come off that line. But we have to get to a place of if this is what God called you to do, we got to work in excellence. And working in excellence is, is music production, um, stage performances, um, even album covers, everything. Everything should match. The, the, the music in that CD should match the cover, and the match the cover should match the artist. The artists get up on stage, they should look like an artist. I get, I get tired of seeing praise and worship people and all these people that come to these shows, and they take things for granted. I've seen artists go up there all with dirty sh- jeans on, dirt, cut off shorts, and they lead in praise and worship because... They're not taking their ministry serious, and what they do is go to a smaller church, and they don't dress their best. They go to a bigger church, they dress, they dress professional and on point. But you got to be on point at all times because if you you never know who you're going to meet, you never know who what person is going to do for you, and when you're lacking on on some things, you know. You want to be able to come and say, look, you need to work on this area. And a lot of these artists are so independent. They find being independent because they got a little bit of buzz, but they never work to get better. They get some awards and all this kind of stuff, but they don't strive to get better. They just keep putting out material, material, material. And as Christian artists, 
we we loving their music, but we're not telling them the truth. Like, yo, your album wasn't as good as the last album, so you as a Christian artist, a Christian artist get comfortable because they get sales. Marvin Sapp, Kirk Franklin, they can just go in the studio every every year and put out an album, and they don't have to work too hard at it because it's, it's, it's automatically going to sell. Not saying that that's what they do, but established, established artists will tend to do that and mostly secular artists, they know they gotta come come with it every time. And a lot of them mess up because they try to go out their range. They don't know their lane. They try to go commercial, and that's what not the avenue you have. So when you lose the fans that you have, and you're trying to get the fans you don't have, you lose results. And like I said, record labels are a bank, and they they they, they sign artists as an investment. If you're no return on investment, you're no good for that label. I don't care if you're 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 friends with that CEO and everything. It's all about business. You get upset with the label because that you're you're not relevant anymore, and they they choose not to sign you. And choosing to sign you is costing them money. So there's they, there's a kingdom and there's business. But we have to keep the kingdom and keep the business. So if we have to watch to see the grind of what the secular artists are doing. I don't encourage a lot of some people are weak and some people will get get involved with secular and then go in and never come back. But if you sit back and think about all the hard work, even with the temptations in Motown back in the day, how they strive hard. Me and Steve talk about it all the time. When we do shows together at the powerhouse, we do shows all over over the area. But the simple fact is we do sound checks, artists don't show up. I did the DMV Christian Music Awards, 26 artists, most of them award-winning, stellar-nominated artists. Only one artist came for sound check, and it happened last year, too. Artists got to take their music for granted. If you're going to be on a, that, uh, on a stage like that, you got to be on you got to be on cue. You got to make sure that sound system is right. We we don't care. We get to a place we don't care. We just drop a CD and just go with it. We we'll, we'll bring a band and just go with it. And people forget the big picture of working in excellence. And then we need to get back to that. So next year, 2014, we basically turn things around, bringing things to artists to make them better. And if they choose not to get the message, they can't say they didn't get it and it'll be their fault. Wow, good stuff. If you just tuned in, you tuned in to the Basic Foundation Show. TC with you, along with uh, Steve Johnson from X Music, Kevin James from CJB Radio and 3HP's uh, Records Own. Uh, Troy Edwards right here. If you want to call in, join in on the conversation. Any artists out there that may have some things they want to chime in on, the number to call is area code 712-432-0075. Again, that's 712-432-0075. Access code is 885-995. Again, that's 885-995. With that being said, gentlemen, I was, you know, me and Kevin was talking again earlier. We talked about a lot earlier um, in regards to, the truth about today's music industry, and uh, I think I, I, we were talking about. I, I give you a prime example. We were talking about making. I was talking about making this earlier. I learned. I was just looking at how they're not as big as they were as far as when they was with the, you know, Jam and Lewis and Perspective Records and A and M and all that. But at the same time, they out here on their grind. Uh, you know, getting to different shows. They, they're going to every area. They, it doesn't matter if they're going to a club to play. It doesn't matter if they're going on the big venue to play. They're all over the place. And do you think, gentlemen, that the artists need to take that same approach? Well, you know, you know, um, I think the the gospel artists they do do it, but um, it's the style of music. It's the people, the people in the church just don't. It's not supportive as supportive as secular music is. Um, that was something else that I wanted to talk about was. Um, Secular music and gospel music. You know, earlier we was talking about um, the, some of this secular music that the gospel community is putting down is really not bad music. Mm -hmm. um, some of these artists are talking about love. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, is there a problem with love? Should we love one another? Um, I mean, when they get to the point where they're talking about um, sex and how they're doing it and killing people and all, I understand it. But some of this music is inspirational music, and I, I, I had to say that. I know this is not, has nothing to do with your question, but um, the artists, 
the gospel community has to accept these artists. Inspirational music. Um, they got to accept it. This is the only way that you're going to be able to cross over. Um, stop being locked into the four walls because mm-hmm. what do Christ want us to do? He wants us to minister to other people. Mm-hmm. So why are we still in the church ministering to the choir? Why are we still doing it? You know, we're we're still doing the same thing. So I just had to say that. But um, far as will that work for gospel? No, it's not going to work. No, no. You don't, th- you don't think it works? Okay. Yeah, I got to uh, um, say on that because I think a lot of the problems is the churches don't want to get churches talk about going out to the community and getting to the community, but. They talk about it, but they don't do it. So I think a lot of artists that's that's in their church, when they talk, they don't, they get to the habit of doing what the church do. They talk about it, but don't mm-hmm. even do it. Don't but they're do satisfied it. with their situation, and the people around them love them, and they get in, in local bookings. They think they're satisfied with that, and then then they get these egos of not growing, and they think they made it. So I see a lot of artists with that mentality, um, you know, because like Steve, I mean. Just a little bit of Steve. Steve Steve done a whole lot of stuff. He's worked with. Um, he actually opened up for Patty Labelle not too long ago. He's worked with um, Casey and JoJo, Charlie Wilson, um, Timberland. He worked with a lot of people in the industry. Mm-hmm. He's great on the production side. So he's a very key person because things that I, things I don't have to do when he when I'm there, he, he's able to take care of situations, sound check, make sure everything's on point. Even if he, him as a performer. He makes sure that the sound man is on point, and the sound man. Don't, I've seen him. If the sound man on point, I've seen this man leave the stage and go back on to, to a soundboard and say, "Hey, this is this is what I need." And he goes back and and and, and never miss a beat because he believes in excellence. And if you're gonna bring, you got to know your worth too. If you're gonna come out to an event, you got to know your worth. You just can't let things slide. We in church has been there, I've been there, done that, sitting there with um, boom boxes and say, "Here's a microphone." I'm like, "Wow!" And the church is a good size, and I, I've seen that the last couple of times. And um, you know, it, it very it disappoints me because you invite artists out and you're showing what you think of their value when you do that. Now, if I come out to a church and they give me a boom box and a mic and they pay me five thousand, I'm I'm going to be upset. I'm not going to be upset, but the, but the simple fact is, if the artist is coming out doing it for free, you got to know their worth and not treat them that way. So I think artists, small churches, small, large or small, when artists come out and do things free, make some have some food out for them. Make sure you appreciate them. I mean, when I was at um, Bishop Eddie Long's church, mm-hmm. Bishop Eddie Long told me a long time ago to Troy, when I bring this art, your artist in, he gave me three months to Troy, give you three months to bring all the artists you want. So I brought artists in. No matter if they were Kirk Franklin or not, he treated them like they were Kirk Franklin. Any artist that came through that door, he treated them. He gave them breakfast, VIP room, and, and, and I really commend him of that because it showed me a lot. And if he can do it, other churches can do it too. That's good stuff. Uh, Steve, what you say about that, man? I mean, um, I, I agree 1,000% with what, what your brother's been saying. Um, um People like um, people like Troy Edwards um, is um, God has given me a special heart for people like them because honestly they could be putting their efforts in the secular industry where they were successful at, mm-hmm. and because of the calling that God gave them, they decided to come back and um, really help artists and Christian artists, you know, based on the calling that God gave them. And, and m- many people, even the church, really don't have, many of them really don't have that type of calling or ministry. And and, and I can say that um, my biggest wounds have been totally at the church. Um, mm. I, I remember when I was, we were performing at this um, big church and, um, um, at just one time, um, Tone was the main feature. So uh, we performed, and we were trying to share to them our vibe of uh, what God gave us. Mm-hmm. And I just remember, like, it still bothers me today where, where as soon as the beat came in, I saw people begin to cross their arms and 
put a mug on their face. And they just looked at us like we were crazy. And and the hurt and the pain that that caused and it made me question why why was I even doing this and mm-hmm. and why was I doing that? And this is really what the chicken enemy was doing because then I was going to um um I, I had this experience and then I was with um I was in the studio and this artist, um, this producer came in there. He's a promoter. He came in there and he was like, Man, I love this track. I love this track. He's like, Man, I can get you ten I can get you ten grand for this track easily tomorrow. Just tell me. So I'm sitting there like, Wow, well the church ain't doing nothing church ain't doing anything. They that kicking me to the side and saying they don't want me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, why don't you come in here and let y'all lay it? And then the man started, he brought his artists in there, and the artists started laying on this track, and and the things that he was saying, I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, dude, you can't say this on my track. You can't do that. You can't talk about pulling a woman's hair back. Come on, man. You can't do that on the track. And I'm like, wow, wow, man. Come on, man. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. He said, well, just keep it to the church and let them just keep on looking at you crazy. And I'm sitting there like, wow, like, really, that's what this, um, I, I think that the church doesn't understand sometimes that sometimes the only thing the artists, artists really do need is just a little bit of support. Mm-hmm. Just to say, you know what, even if I don't understand what you're doing, you know, I appreciate you trying to do what you're doing for God, you know, and and I think that um, that could go a long way for some of these artists that have it. They have it. They just need a little bit of momentum, mm-hmm. you know. And I mean, I, I, I think that's one of the biggest things that can get the artists on page and, and the artists with the momentum. And like you say, like Troy said, and then being real with them. You know, like like some some artists have it, they're just not ready yet. Mm-hmm. You know, but what we like Troy's made a good point. We we give artists a big head, you know, we, we give certain artists with a big head, but then the other artists we won't invest in them. We won't even treat them like they're anything. You know, like um our ministry, we don't we do church engagements but mm-hmm. we get more calls for secular venues. Mm-hmm. Um, to call us to perform than gospel venues. And the reason why is that people say they don't want all that sex and all that other stuff out there, but they still want a quality sound, and they figure that church people won't relate to their secular audience. Um, and then um, the secular artists are too nasty. So they, like, they treat us better than how most any church would ever treat us. You know, I mean, and I, and I, I think it, 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 it's backwards in how the church thinks. You know, I, li- I like what he said, yeah. too. Um, I just want to chime in just for a minute oh, yeah. um, about the, some of this is, is some of our fault. I'm just going to say our, yeah. because I do know that Troy has platforms available for gospel artists mm-hmm. um, in outside of the church. Right. Um, I, I think that we, we have to make more platforms for these artists that are coming up today. The artists that are coming up today need another platform to showcase their talent. Why? Well, uh, most of the music that is coming out right now is urban contemporary. It's not going to fly in the church. It's just not going to fly because the people in the church is just not going to go for it. So so we have to now create platforms for these artists to be showcased in another way outside of Sunday morning church or just in the church. We might need to set up platforms in a club or something and have some have a concert in the club and have these artists to come out. Uh because we have to remember one thing. This is supposed to be a message that is spread to the masses, not just to the church, but it's supposed to be spread to bring people into the church. So we have to create some platforms. And, and I'm gonna, I take my hats off to Troy because he do create platforms 
for the artist outside of the church walls, this is when we're going to be able to move forward. We can't move forward right now because we're still stuck with the same 20 artists that we've been stuck with for the last 25 years. Mm-hmm. When is we going to give it up? <laughs> we, we have to give it up. I agree. Wow. I, I agree. I, well, wow. I was going to say in regards to that, just piggybacking backing up a little bit as far as, uh, you know, I, I feel that the church has been the demise of a lot of Christian artists, um, a lot of gospel artists, um, because of the simple fact that, you know, when gospel artists like Steve said, try to come in, they'll be discouraged because of the, you know, faces look like, look like they're on an iodine bottle and things like that. You know, um, that discouraged a lot of artists. Say, you know what, what am I doing this for? Okay, you know, well, this is how I express myself to God, and you guys look at me like I'm crazy. You know, this is the way I want to express. I want to do something different, something creative. You know, now, as you know, as my good friend B. Slade, Tone, Anthony Clark Wheels, when you want to call him down, any name he uses it right now. But uh, one thing he said when he came into this, and I and I like what he said, and that's why I think he's diverse now. And I mean, the boy talented, the boy anointed, the boy is gifted what he do. But one thing he said that he said. I'm not a gospel artist. I've never been a gospel artist. He's always he said, I'm an artist that just so happened to be a Christian and saved at that you know what I'm saying? But I'm not a gospel artist and I thought that was different because of the simple fact that he's free to do whatever he needed to do. He he's not in the box. That was the whole purpose of out the box as far as the uh C D he came out with. But but going back to what I say, I, I agree with all you the gentlemen that the church you know, kills a lot of the passion for people to come out with something different. I mean, it's open more now because of the Kirk Franklins and the Mary Marys and the mainstream artists that did kind of open up a little bit, but in regards to somebody that was that actually was trying to pioneer this, this back before all that happened, it was discouraged. And I, I'm, you're right, Kevin, we have to come out and uh, come out of those things and do more things to you know, let, the, let a lot of new artists that's coming up, let them know that we do appreciate what God has given them. We yeah. gotta bring some people in the church. Mm-hmm. We have to go out to the streets. Take that music to the streets. Take it to the people who need the music. Mm-hmm. Why are we singing it to the people in the church? I need to go and tell that man on that corner my testimony. I need to sing that testimony to him. So we need to to create these platforms where the people who's not in the church feel comfortable to come in. Mm-hmm and be able to be ministered to, because everybody's just not going to step into the church. Number one, they're allowing a lot of these reality shows to come on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Th- th- these people are seeing these shows. What's happening now, it th- they think it's doing some good. Oh, man, that is great. Well, you know what the people are saying, right? Oh, I knew that was going on in the church anyway. That's why I don't go. Listen, yeah. we need to create platforms outside of the church that people from the outside will feel comfortable coming in too. Mm-hmm. Um, this, uh, what's the artist, Troy, Troy, Troy's promoting the artist now. This guy is tough. He's a hip hop artist. Well, what's the guy, man? I can't think is of it. Russ oh, Russ. Oh, Russ. Russ. Russ Shank. Russ Shank is tough. He's like, oh, man, listen, let me tell you, <laughs> I, this guy is off the chain. So yeah. if I created a platform on the outside of the church and brought this brother in in a concert atmosphere, let me tell you, some of these secular people wouldn't really realize what was going on until they heard his lyrics. And I guarantee you, once they heard the lyrics, it's so good and inspiration that it wouldn't make no difference. Mm, you, see, do, do, you, see, do, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yes, we have to bring them in. Once we get them in there, then that's when you clean the fish. You can't clean the fish if it's still in the sea. That's true. <laughs> that's good stuff. That's good stuff. We just tuned in. You tuned in to the Basic Foundation Show here. Uh, TC here with you once again. Got Steve Johnson from X Music. Uh, Troy Edwards, 3HP Radio. CJB's on the hot seat, man. Kevin James. Anybody want to call in? Like I said, any artists listening, anybody want to listen, they want to call in, want to have any questions, chime in. The number to call is area code 712-432-0075. Again, that's 712-432-0075. Access code is 885 
1-800-585-9995. Gentlemen, let me ask you this question, because, I mean, we're talking about the truth of, about the music industry, um, you know, in the gospel and things like that. Now, how do you feel about, you know, you know secular artists coming up to the gospel industry, you know what I'm saying, working that in the, you know, the, the intertwining of, of both worlds? I see no problem with it. I, I, I hate to, I mean, I mean, I'm, that, that's just, it's, it's, it's the person's heart. I don't, I don't know what this person's heart is. Maybe this person is coming here with a genuine heart and bringing something that could save somebody. I'm all about saving souls. If you can save a soul and you can do it in a loving manner, hey, yo, I wouldn't care if you sung country whatever rock i don't care i don't care if you smoked five pounds of weed that was your business and your past life mm. what you bring to the table now is what i look at so i don't care i'm all right with it okay troy what you think about that yeah i think i think um well i you know of course i've done stuff with you know with you know, R and B artists that, you know, going coming back to gospel and stuff and after we released the song by the former group today when they were signed with Motown, you know, and they were calling them the four tops the next coming up when I had them, you know, um and I talked to a couple of other artists and you know, that that was in the secular and they found out that I was working with them, they would hit me up and said, Look man, this is what I'm doing and I said, Well, I can't work with you because it's where you sitting there talking, you you you're not relevant in a secular world you're just coming in to, to, to try to come to the Christian world to uh, make some money. So when, when I already know when I'm talking to them, know where their heart is, when it comes about a money situation and not being relevant in the world and want to come over to the gospel side and see what you can do with that, try to make some money, that's, that's is what, that's, those are things I'm totally against. And, um, you know, certain things like, you know, like my own wife, she posts things on, on her site all the time. And she always get a lot of views. And today, you know, she made, you know, we talked about it this morning about like even holy hip hop artists going to perform in front of the youth. And, you know, of course, my wife, you know, she made up some rhymes like, uh, you know, just to make an example, she talked about, are uh, you used to flip ladies, but now I flip Bible pages and stuff like that. <laughs> just to make an example and say, I used to ride for the devil, now I'm, I'm riding for the king. And she said, you got to be mindful because. When you say stuff like that, you got three, five, seven year old kids. You, the parents have got to go home and explain why a Christian artist say certain things. An artist got to know what to say in certain platforms. If you're for the streets, you're for the streets. You can't come into a church and start rhyming about the streets, what you used to do to women, and what you, you know, and try to flip it and say what you do for the king. You can't do that. The simple fact is, and then they get upset. A lot of holy hip-hop artists get upset because they don't get radio play. The simple fact is, you have to have a radio song to get radio play. And they're always sending out the hottest songs on the streets to, to these internet radio shows and thinking they're going to play it. And the content of it is, 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 is out there. So certain, certain artists, I feel, that in Christian hip-hop, they court in the middle because they, they, they try to keep it street. They keep it so street, they forget about the God in, in, in the God in the content. They just try to make a metaphor and flip it to put God in it versus, you know, I think a lot of the um, artists need to retransition on their mindset, the things that they're doing, and, and just because you're a gospel artist, you can make it a negative effect on a kid just by the content you're saying. So we have to be mindful. And, you know, and because um, I used to be in holy hip-hop heavy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now I had to go towards more of the gospel because that's where, you know, the gospel music is, is paying my bills. Gotcha. The holy hip-hop, the problem with the holy hip-hop genre, there's a lot of clicks and there's a lot of politics. And, you know, there's a lot of politics in gospel music, mm -hmm. but... They don't understand. Try to get involved. Make radio ready records so you can get radio play, and then you can come in and you. The churches will be more can receive you more than than when you listen to that content because the church's last mindset was the last rapper that came in there in their church, and so they say we're not bringing rappers in there anymore. They gotta be be mindful of what follows them after they you know they leave, and it would follow them. No more Christian rappers. 
a lot of these rappers need to be mindful, and that's why a lot of churches are against holy hip hop because it's too it's too edgy, it's too close to the secular world, and it's just like a secular rapper reaching trying to talk about Christ. So I think the mindset we we it's, 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 it's a lot of improvement needs to be done in the urban music, and there's a lot of things that need to be done in 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 the, um. So I think we have to get Christian music straight, a lot of things in Christian music straight before we able to go to another platform because we just can't come to the world with to just owe anything. That's good stuff, Steve. What you guys say about that, sir? Uh, again, I, I agree with both of y'all. I mean, I, I think y'all both on. Um, 1,000% on, on point, which I'm saying. I also think that um, as far as secular artists doing um, gospel, um, gospel is a message. It's not really the messenger. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that there are two, um, there are two separate issues. Um, um, I don't think it's wrong for any secular artist that wants to do a song and say that, oh, I want to do a gospel song, I want to do a gospel album. Um, um, I, I don't think it's wrong for them if they want to do that. I mean, that's because it's, it's the message. Yeah. Um, what I don't agree with is now what, would the, what is the church's stance on accepting their music in their church as far as ministering, you know, because um, they're, they're two different um, issues. Now, um, um, Chris Brown is one of my um, Chris Brown is one of my favorite secular artists that are, that is out there. I mean his his writing, his um, things that he does is just to me like he's he's on top of his game. Mm-hmm. Now if he decided that he wanted to do a Christian album, I would buy the Christian album, mm-hmm. but um, um, I wouldn't bring him to my youth revival. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it is not the platform um, 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 for him. You know, now um, I, I I think that if we as the church begin to um, jump on Chris Brown and tell him he had no business doing a um, Christmas album, I think that first of all, you might be hitting somebody who doesn't quite understand where you're coming from, mm-hmm. and. And Chris Brown has a soul too, mm-hmm. and but we also um, um, just because he does an album, you know, doesn't mean that he's the minister at our church. But sure enough, I mean, he has the he has the right. You he may be he may be fulfilling what God has called him to do, not knowing that he's not going to receive re- rewards for it. You know, right. he may he may wind up getting himself straight and everything, and God might say, you know what, you did this, you did this, but you didn't do it for me, so you lost rewards from that. Yeah. You know, we don't know where Chris Brown or where all these other artists may be, ten, fifteen years from now. And one, one thing that one thing that's con- has been very consistent that you see in the Bible is that we win souls through love. Right. You know, and who better to show love but the church? You know, I'm going to take it a step further, Steve. Uh, the thing is, is that you look at everybody that's in the Bible, they had to go through something. They had a process where they possessed anything. They had to go through <laughs> the process. That, yeah. You know, you look, David was a murderer. He's a adulterer. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But he's also he's, he's also a warrior, a shepherd, you know, a king. So, yeah. therefore, mm-hmm. that I always talk about the process before the possession. You know, everybody had the process they had to go through before they possessed anything. And yeah. I think yeah. what happens is what you just brought with, you know, uh, you know, Chris Brown, you know, you know, talented young man, uh, come out with a gospel album, things like that. And you got to realize that a lot of people that's secular, you have a lot of them that are saved, though. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you find you're out right. that they are saved. It's just that yeah. they look at that as an occupation, as a job, just like we look at a nine to five or yeah. anything else. Am I right, Steve? Mm-hmm. I know you work with a lot of people, so. I mean, I mean, honestly, I mean, um, I, I can't call. I can't call names. Okay. Um, but I remember I was um, about four years ago, mm-hmm. four or five years ago, mm-hmm. I was in, in the living room with this platinum winning artist, and, um, and 
he he was he was just sharing, you know, he's doing the music and everything, and you think that the money was flowing for him because his stuff was on rotation. He was on top of the Billboard charts and everything, and he began to share to us that he was walking in the mall, and he was walking in the mall, and he said that. Um, just he wasn't in his gear. He wasn't in there. Like he's one of those type of artists that um, he um, if if you saw him on TV, you probably would not recognize him face to face because you know how he dyed his hair and, mm-hmm. and I mean TV make him look like he tall, but he really really mad short, you know. <laughs> yeah, and he gotcha. said this. This lady came up to him, and she was um, probably maybe in her early 60s, mm-hmm. and she said that she walked up to him. She said, sir, I don't know who you are. She said, but there's a, there's a presence about you that just, draw, you just drew me, and God told me to tell you stop running mm-hmm. and give your gift back to him. Mm-hmm. So he said that he just looked at her and he was like, wow. So then he says about, um, about a month later, he was walking in the street and this lady just began to walk up to him and start prophesying over his life, mm. telling him how, how he, he's touched many other people, but not the way that God wants him to touch. And that, that he's not going to be in peace until he lays it back to God. And the whole point, of the the conversation was he wanted to know how he got himself back on track Mm -hmm. and and he and his struggle was that he says okay if i switch over to do gospel he says i'm gonna lose my house i'm gonna lose my car Mm. I'm going to lose everything that I have. We're like, well, you know, that's not necessarily true. He's like, tell me one person. Let's call names and let's say who did it differently. Mm. He's like, and he's like, man, he's like, and then the thing about it is that, and this is what really hurt me. He said that I was at the BET Awards and this gospel artist who I won't call names. Right. Um, was backstage, and he said that he the gospel artist got mad, and he says he cussed everybody up there, back there out. Like he said, he cussed them out, got in everybody's face, and he looked at them, and he was like, "Well, for real, I mean, why switch over? It ain't no different." He's like, "They doing the same thing that I'm doing." And and we began to share to him, but one thing that I recognized it was was, was the, the huge eye opener to me was of how many saved um, children of God that were doing secular who were either in a backslidden state mm-hmm. or they're still trying to find out what they should do. I mean, I, I've met people who, I mean, um, and I, I can bring his name up. Um, um, one of the brothers that I personally give all props to, Rodney Jerkins, mm-hmm. when I was in the studio with Rodney, and Rodney began to, he had he had myself, one of my cousin, Daryl, who was a producer for um, Jodeci and Justin Timberlake and them. Mm-hmm. He had Mason in the, in the room. He had a whole lot of people in his room. And he began to share uh, how God put him in the position, how he anoints the studio before all the singers come in there. And he shared how um, how one time Michael Jackson had come in the studio, and Michael Jackson said, wow, he says, as soon as I walked in your building, I just felt this warm presence that felt so good. He said, it was so it felt like so much love in here. And they shared to Michael Jackson how his dad had anointed the door frames and, mm. and they had prayed all over the whole studio before he came in there. And Rodney said that 
a lot of these artists would not know anything about Christ, but just like um, God allowed Moses to um, to be be raised by Pharaoh, mm-hmm. he says you gotta have some people that are working for the Egyptians for God. Uh, God places people like this in those places so that when God begins to move, somebody can speak. He says, but like church kind of always can always think that it's going to happen the way they think it's going to happen. You know, it's going to hit you in your face the way that you think it's going to hit you in your face. So I agree. You're right. They got many city secular artists that are trying to figure out how to make that impact. That's what I'm saying. If you just tuned in, once again, having a great discussion about the music industry, the truth about it today. If anybody want to call in with any questions, comments, or concerns, the number to call is air code 712-432-0075. Again, that's 712-432-0075. The Basic Foundation Show is back at you. This is a new installment of the first series, first part of the series that we're starting, the truth about the music industry. Troy, what you got to say about that, man? That, that's powerful, man. That was powerful, Steve. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. He said everything is good, and you know everything that we're talking about, you know, and and it's great with all the people who are listening, you know. Okay, you hear it all this now. You know these are the things, and now, now this is the situation. We're going to tell you how it's going to change. Mm-hmm. 2014. Steve and I and a couple other people, um, we're actually going to do a 3HP workshop and conference. Okay. We actually got Def Jam. Columbia, Sony, Atlantic Records, um, Clyde Davis Organization. We have a whole bunch of uh, major labels coming out, and they're going to listen to We're going to put them in place for these gospel artists to listen because a lot of these labels, when they get the material, they don't get the, the type of nice material. We're going to give a conference of telling what artists we're going to listen to the music, we're going to critique it, we're going to do a panel, we have a conference and to teach these artists. And it's a shame because a lot of these artists don't listen to a lot of people in the gospel, but when you hear, when you throw out all these names, they're going to come running. Mm-hmm. So we got we got the major labels. We actually got Fred Newsom from the Newsom Awards is going to be a part of this. Um, uh, Henry Harris is going to be a part of this. So we, you know we're going to be we 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 um we're contacting more people to be a part of this because it's time for a change. It's time for a lot of these um these labels and and these major labels to hear what what Christian music has to offer, and we we have to become a voice in this industry. To make a voice, so once you once you be able to once you set the tone, people will tend to listen to you what you say. You're earning the right to have a voice. So we're looking to take gospel music, especially independent, because this is an opportunity for a lot of independent artists to be heard. And, and you know, if you you think your music is hot, when you come to these labels and get your music presented, they're going to tell you the truth. And we got to get to a place to tell or to show artists what they need to do, how are we going to... Because we talk about working in excellence, and I really really don't think a lot of these artists don't know how to work in excellence. Mm-hmm. They just do the best that they can do without striving to get better, and they get satisfied the way they are and way, the way they move things. So they sold a couple of units, and they're making moves, and people are saying their name. And I had one artist told me the other day, we run DMV. I said, how you run DMV? <laughs> well, we're doing this, we're doing that. Okay, if you run the DMV, you're a hot artist. When you go to shows, how many people come in to see you? Well, we the people are already there. No, 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 no. When you're making impact, and these, this is what the artists don't realize, a lot of artists, and, and, and there's, there's some award-winning independent artists out there that don't have a following, but the simple fact is when you come, when you, you say you come into a place and come into this church and people come to hear your voice, that's when you start making impact. That's where we lose and we, we forget about that. You know, a lot of people don't like to hear fan base, but let me use the word having a fan base or having a following and saying, you know what? I want to be like this dude who follows Christ. He's a representative of what I do, and I want to be walk like that and talk like that, and, and it teaches me to how to go to a whole nother level because we got to see other people that's doing amazing things, that they're doing outreaches and out to the community. People want to know where they can go to take their ministry to a whole nother level. And, 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 and I tell people all the time, you can have DMV. 3HP is about global impact. Mm-hmm. This, you know, I have chapter reps in a lot of states, 
And even overseas, we're making a lot of impact. Um, but the simple fact is, we, we're, we're more about outreach. And if people are not getting saved, we got a hat drive coming up. We're going out. We're going out to the homeless. We're going out to the streets in the hood. We're going out to the homeless. Me, Steve, and the whole three HP crew. We're going out there giving our hats and because people are always giving coat drives. But a lot of these homeless people don't have socks. They don't have hats. They don't have gloves. So we're going to go out there and personally give it. We're going out to the hood and giving people what they need. And then we're going to go down to the harbor because the homeless is one thing. But there's people in need too, so we're going to try to cover all bases this this winter and make sure to let people know this is a gift from God, you know. So we've been looking for donations and people to come out, you know, give give five dollars or whatever. But we're going to go out there and get a lot of material, a lot of hats, a lot of gloves, and we're going to go out there and give these people and let them know this is coming from the Lord. This is what God called us to do. A lot of people forget about. They get so caught up in the music, they forget about outreach and what they're called to do in bringing people to Christ. So I think next year we, we have a whole lot of things coming up with the, uh, the Kingdom Business Conference in Atlanta. We're going down there. We're doing Unity Fest in DMV. Um, we got Clump for Christ Awards, and we got, the, you know, of course, I'm a uh, coach of the Excellent Christian uh, Music Academy. Um, we got City Tech. We got other outreaches. See, this is another thing. We're sharing. We got other outreaches in other states coming to our area so we can build together. We got city takers and sanctuary. And, and, you know, so we're doing a whole lot of things in the area. And I'm going to continue doing things because, you know, like X Music uh, with Steve, you know, it was on the whole, on, it was on the Holy Hip Hop promotional CD. But um, we had to grab, we had to grab, we had this, the CD came out, but they had to hold off of it because um, of Robin Thicke's um, sample of Marvin Gaye. So it's been a conflict in that, but this week um, is going to be announced. Steve, 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 and them was on the Soul Train Awards, um, Soul Train Music Awards compilation too. Mm -hmm. These are things that we're talking about: Christian music getting, making impact, and getting heard to the people who don't know anything about Christ. So they'll listen to that secular music on that album, but they're going to run into some godly music. And say, you know what? This is great. So. They might not go back to the Chris Brown. They said, you know what? I'm going to keep listening to it. But you know what? God has taught I hadn't been living right. It was meant for me to have the CD. And God is calling me. I'm, X Music is on the CD because, you know, it was there for me to to say I wasn't living right. I know I'm out there doing things wrong. I know I'm out there in the streets. I know I'm doing wrong. I'm going to church on Sunday. But when I got to that song, it really touched me. I ain't living right. I need to turn my life around. And... These are things is why I try to get artists on things because they run into the word without even by mistake. It's not a by mistake to to us, but it's a mistake to them because they ran across it, didn't think they were going to run into some godly music on a secular CD. So we finally continue finding ways. We're doing a lot of major impact um, things, you know, with X Music and a lot, a lot of other artists that I have on the camp. We're going to continue and strive and to do what God called us to do. So a lot of artists we were talking about with things that need to happen. And, you know, Kevin James, um, me, TC, Steve, we could charge for the information. People you know, get on 30, get 30 minutes on the phone call to give them what we're giving them for free. You you need to write this down because we're giving you some good stuff. And this good stuff we're giving you, we're telling you, we're not bashing you, we're telling you how to take things to a whole nother level. Good stuff right there. That's real good stuff. You know what I was going to say, and I'm going to let Kevin chime in, but what I was going to say basically is that uh, looking at, for what you just put out there and what Steve put out there, that, you know, looking at the gospel music as a whole, gospel music industry as a whole versus the secular music industry or, or the music industry in itself, it is separate. And I think that yeah. what you just brought out, man, is, is I think that that's the, that is the next level. You know what I'm saying? And I was going to ask this as well, but before I do that, I'm going to let Kevin chime in. You got something you want to say, sir? Uh, well, 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 I just I, I just want to take my hats off to Troy and 3HP Records for the things that they are doing as um, far as outreach ministry. Mm -hmm. um, that is like awesome. I mean, um, that's what it, it's all about. Um, it, it's definitely about ministry, especially out, outreach ministry. When you can bring souls in, I think you know that's my key to the whole thing. As long as someone can get saved um, or letting someone know about Christ, uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, um, see, some people, artists out there. Um, 
that's why you got to have a team because someone has to be business, someone has to have the ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? Because you you can get up tangled up in the two, and you'll be all messed up. So someone has to keep the business side going and and be business, but keep it in love, but do business. And someone has to be there to keep that ministry going. And that's what Troy is doing. They're doing the outreach. Hey, yo, we we got outreach going. And that is a part of marketing, if anybody know anything about that. But go ahead on. I mean, because of, <laughs> <laughs> that is, it's the truth. It's marketing. You're marketing. It's, it's artists. I'm, I'm not, but I did still take my head off because he is, he's doing great stuff in the kingdom. And long as I've been knowing him, he's always done great things in the kingdom. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I take my head off of him. But yes. it is, it's, it's marketing. It is marketing. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. to take that and put an artist in it, and it'll be marketing to to an artist. I mean, yeah, okay. great segue. You know I'm about business, buddy. Yes, yeah, great segue. Sure. Great segue. Which I was, I was going to talk about because I want to yeah, digress. Yeah. Uh, a little while ago, we talked about radio airplay and. One of the things me and Kevin always talk about is that a lot of times the artists look for the radio airplay to be the essential way of getting their music out, which is one of the key component of it, of course. But I uh, want to see what other ways we can actually do it. And you, you actually talked about promotional CDs. What other ways, gentlemen, that we can actually help the artists get their music out if it's quality music? Because I'm, I'm sorry, I don't play music that's not quality. Not no slight against artists, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it may not be radio ready we try to give them tips and things to go back and help them out it's not necessarily mean that they are not a good singer they may have the wrong producer or could be vice versa who knows yeah you know you know um what you were saying about the uh about radio and artists um the artists really don't even know how to use radio the proper way okay uh it's not being successful to them because they really don't even know how to use it. They're not using it in the proper manner. Um, I'm not going to get into it. I, yeah. We not right now, no way. Okay. But okay. it's a it's a way that you have to use radio. They don't follow up. Um, if if I took one of the honest off my station and asked them, do you know where my largest listenership coming from? I mean, what we were, why the artists couldn't tell me. So it, it, what it does, what it tells me is, you shouldn't even be on radio. You don't even follow up with your songs at all. Wow. But there are a lot of different ways that you could put your music out there. You could use YouTube, and, but it's a certain way to use YouTube. It's, it's, it's a certain way that you have to do this stuff. Um, but you need to hire your professional P and PR, or I think Troy, do y'all do that? Um, you need to hire a professional to do yes. it for you. It's called marketing, and that's what you should do. You got to market yourself. Sometimes it might not take your music. Mm. Sometimes it might not just it might not take your music to to market people market something else to get to to get them to your music. I might market my t shirts when you come to look at my t shirts I have music, so now they're buying you came there to buy t shirts but look, I got music up there now you're buying my music mm-hmm. so you you see what I'm saying mm-hmm. I got All right. it. a lot of different ways. Yes, sir. Troy, you want to chime in on that one? Yeah, um, you know, I've, it's it's and you know, a lot of people don't realize eighty percent of your your career is marketing and promotions, and um, I I ran into a lot of artists that um within the past couple of weeks um got you know they called me and and um said you know I heard you're doing great things, but what is marketing and promotions? I'm like these <laughs> artists have been doing music for so long. They never got to understand what marketing and promotion is all about because I think a lot of artists think getting signed, the, the label, you, you expect the label to do everything for you. These days, artists, the label's only going to grind hard enough as the artist. They only sign the artists that's already established. And, um, and those are the ones that are not getting 360 deals. 
The ones that are not heard are the ones that are getting 360 deals. So it, it takes, like I said, the bank is, is, is like a, is, you know, the bank is the label, and you are the investment. And if you don't believe in your ministry, why do you want people to invest in your ministry when you don't believe in it to yourself? and you're always taking shortcuts. I, I sit back and watch everything. Me and Steve are very critical on things. And when we, we do, when we do events, most of these artists don't even show up for sound check. They don't know the importance. But the ones that really take their ministry real serious, those are what let us know those are ones we can work with because they dare for sound check because they know the importance of when you up there giving God's word, it should be an excellence. You want to make sure the balance. You want to make sure people are getting heard. You want you want to make sure, and and and, and you want to make sure all your instruments are getting heard right. Because remember, a lot of people forget those people back behind you playing instruments. They're playing for the Lord too. So you want to make sure that saxophone is that guy's delivering his saxophone through a message. The person's playing drums, delivering his message through through the drums. People take. Their, their groups and bands for granted and don't realize this ministry is much bigger than what you think it is. Mm-hmm. So we want to get artists into the mindset to really think about what they're called to do, what, you know, what, what they're supposed to do, and then walk in it. Because a lot of them just don't know. They think about, they think about just going, they just think about performing. And when they perform, they're not doing that great either. So we, me and Steven, I always critique everybody. So he always, no matter where he is at, and on the soundboard and all that kind of stuff, if I see somebody terrible, I say, yo, what you think about? <laughs> and we always on the same page. Then when somebody's real, real hot, I go see and say, what you think about them? Because we working, working with a person, you always want to know if that person is on the same page as you are. And we kind of, we click, we work. You know, we bump heads sometimes. <laughs> but the simple fact <laughs> is, but but we bump heads. But we, at the end of the day, we always come to an agreement. It's like, you know what? You're right. You know. So the simple fact is, we striving to get artists better because when, when God continuously opens the doors and using 3HP and other ministries as a vessel, we want to make sure these people come into the doors with us. I can't go to major events and represent the whole Christian label if I don't go without an army. I make more impact with, with a, a group of soldiers behind me than me going by myself, representing to a whole room of secular people. So a lot of people don't get that mindset, oh, you're doing your thing in the secular world, doing your thing in the secular world. I cannot, I, I, you know, it'd be foolish of me going out, doing outreach by myself, giving out hats and gloves, in the hood by myself in a part of town that I don't know anybody. Mm. Don't make sense. But that's why we strive to pull outreach. And when artists want to be a part of the 3HP ministry, be a part of our powerhouse, 3HP Live, all the events that we do, we want them to serve before they hit our stage. We want to make sure their mindset is right and they're there for a purpose, not what Troy can do for you, you said, what you can do for the Lord and help this ministry grow. I believe in what you're doing, Troy. We want to follow that. You and Steve are doing great work. We want to follow and be a part of something that's really is growing together because we can't do it alone. So those are the people that we're looking for. And all these artists, they need to work together in unity because they're not a fist fight and trying to fight who's the best. It, you know, it's all about we got people out there lost. We have to get to a place to be ministering to people instead of fighting against one another, talking bad about one another, not liking some person. We've got all one common goal of doing God's music and ministering to people. How, how can you not like a person who's doing that? So when, you, when, when that situation comes about, it's about these people are about their own appetites and desires versus serving the Lord and making this world a better place. Good stuff. Steve, what you got to say about that, sir? Um, I think the biggest thing that I can say about um, what everybody has said, and I want to speak very honestly, very honestly, is that this is not a commercial ad. I'm speaking from my heart. Mm -hmm. 3HP and Troy Edwards and his wife, Shanae, they are beasts. Mm -hmm. And I've seen... um, um, I've been grinding in this game for a while, 
in because of the calling that God gave my ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew I could have gone the praise and worship route because when you produce, you know, you just kind of like tap into a certain realm and you're like, well, I could do this, but I knew that wasn't what God called me to do. Mm-hmm. And I could not find someone that could really push the agenda. And when I ran into uh, 3HP and Troy Edwards, um, Troy did not sell me anything. He didn't tell me what he could do. He, actually, our first initial conversations, I hung the phone and didn't know what to think about it. Mm-hmm. Because Troy was just straight. He was to the point, and he was like, yeah, so-and-so, so-and-so. And um, I heard your stuff. Um, I think I could do this for you. And when he told me what he could do, I was like, man, there you go, another church cat sending a dream, lying to another artist. Hmm. And I, I spoke to my group, and I told the group what he told me. And my group said, whatever, let's keep on going. And... I was like, yo, there's something different about this dude. Like, like I, I'm, I'm checking out his resume and everything, and he's definitely credible, but it's a whole lot of secular artists, a whole lot of secular people that's been in the industry that was not success, successful doing um, this gospel side. Mm-hmm. You know, a whole lot of them fall in their face. A whole lot of them are still following their face. Mm-hmm. And... This brother, Troy Edwards, and like I say, any artist listening, I'm telling you that this brother is the truth. Not only is he the truth, he, he has made more ground for my group in a short period of time than what I've been able to do since I've been trying to do Christian music. And, and what I really relate this to is if marketing is not your thing, hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Don't try to keep on doing it by yourself. You're going to waste your time. You don't know what you're doing, so hire somebody. That means that you have to actually open up your checkbook and stop asking for a freebie and say, listen, if I need you to put time in there, i got to pay you to do that. Like, like everybody got life to need to be kept on. Mm-hmm. We got to pay for people to do what their gift is. And I've been in meetings with Troy, and the only thing that I could say is that um, a lot of people don't know how hard secular um, managers and secular promoters grind. They really don't. A good one. Like, a lot of people really don't know what. Kanye West's manager really does, how he really don't sleep. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what managers, that's what promoters do. They grind. I personally had not seen, I'm not saying they're not out there. I'm just saying that I personally had not ran into a gospel promoter that really grinded until I met Troy. Mm. And the only thing I could see was, see, he... He's from a secular background. He understands. So this brother, his wife, they got phone call. They had to meet with me, had another meeting on the side. They typed in on the laptop at one side. And I'm like, oh, my God, y'all making me tired. <laughs> like, really? Like, like, how in the world do you multitask like that? And, and like I say, like, the, I mean, I, I just personally want to give, like, mad props to, to, um, 3HP because um, um, 3HP is not a big joke. They're no joke. Like, they really, really, really visionaries, working hard, and I'm sorry, the fruits, You go, everybody's going to really see the fruits that all the, hard, all the hard work that they've done. And I think that's my biggest thing is hire somebody if you can't do it yourself. Wow, that's good stuff right there. We just tuned in. Tuned into the Basic Foundation Show, TC, with you. 
uh, having a good time. Got about 15 more minutes to be on, but man, that, that's awesome. And uh, you know what? That, that's so key. And I think the reason, and you gentlemen can probably attest to this, I think the reason why a lot of people are not really into marketing and promotions and things of that nature is because a lot of them haven't really, you know, a lot of a lot of the artists now when we talk about secular, a lot of people that's been out there and things of that nature, um, they had people doing that for them. So they really didn't have to do it, you know. So now they, you know, now they independent, or you know, it was a lot of mainstream independent, now they have to go ahead and do the extra grind and things like that. Would you guys agree with that? No doubt. Um, uh, the, the, um, some some of your gospel, some of your gospel promoters do grind. Though. I mean, some of them just we don't see it, but some is like you get like Mary Mary, you get up into that that category. You, you're talking about somebody grinding. But well, and Troy has always they the three HP they, they Troy has always been that way. That's that's been that's been him years years. He's been doing it for many a years. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the marketing part of this is so key to artists today. The marketing part is well, wow, you know, is 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 what's going to bring the people to know who you are. Mm-hmm. They have to understand, like Troy was saying, there's a difference between marketing and promotion. Marketing is going to let you know, let the people know, uh, I got a product. The promotion is to take the people to buy the product. Mm-hmm. Um, so so it's, it is a difference, and the artist should know the difference. Um, in fact, like Steve was saying, you shouldn't even try to deal with it. You should just go ahead on, go dig in your pocket, pay somebody to to do this because, you know, it's not something that an artist needs to deal with. Um, the next thing here is this. I'm going to go to that, but we, we should find out what can we do to make this, the gospel music, so this life preserver to them. I'm, we need to really need to talk about that because it's dying. It's drowning. Well, and talk about it. We got to come up with some, some type of solution. Um, to stop it because if not, it's going to drown within the next couple of years, about next couple of years. Um, but the thing, artists, before you even get into marketing and promotion, become an artist. Mm. Mm. You know, we, 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 we did, and I know Troy, Troy definitely probably, I know he's all about it. The first thing they need to do is become an artist. If, if you don't become an artist, you would never know None of this stuff, because when you come a uh, artist, this type of stuff is known to you. Mm-hmm. You get see these people see Kirk Franklin and Mary Mary and all of them. They see all these records they've sold, but they don't know how many years it took to build Kirk Franklin. Mm. Because Franklin had music out before he came out with the family. Yes, sure. Mm-hmm. So, 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 it took years to build Mr. Kirk Franklin. Even when Vicky and Mac found Kirk Franklin, Vicky and Mac didn't put Kirk Franklin out there. Kirk Franklin went through artist development for I think it was a year or two. He developed him first. Mm. So, so, so before you even get into some music and all of this stuff, become an artist first. Because we have, like I always say, we have a lot of singers out there, but we don't have no artists. Wow. That's the major problem wow. with the industry as far as the artists, or if that's what they want to call themselves, <laughs> artists, <laughs> is they're not artists. They're singers. Singers. Mm. It's a difference. Mm. Not out it. It's a difference, huh? It's a big difference. Huge difference. So 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 I say anyone who's really serious about this and has what it takes, you need to go through artist development before you even think about recording a record or whatever. If not, like Troy said, 
the music is only, I said 10%, but he gave it 20, and I'm going to stick with it. I ain't got no problem. Okay. <laughs> the music is only 20% of the battle. 20%. That means, for real, for real, your record really don't mean nothing. Mm. For real. Really. I could take a bad record if I got the right marketing team with me, mm. I can sell it. So that's your true. record really don't mean nothing. That's, that's true. So the, the, the key is for you to become an artist. Stop being a singer, become an artist. And you can't do it on your own. You need to hire someone to do this. This game ain't cheap. You think them record companies were spending a hundred thousand dollars on these artists for nothing? <laughs> It's not cheap. Uh. It's not cheap. You can't do it for free no more. That, that was a story. We just got recording studios in your your house, which you shouldn't be using. Um, you got recording <laughs> studios in your house. I mean, people, you think you can spend a thousand dollars on a piece of software and you can record a professional quality wow. done CD? No. And those who say you can, well, you got to prove me different. It, it don't. It can't happen. It can't happen. Go into the studio, take it to a professional, and let them do it. So I think artists have to go into, as I always say, become an artist. Singers, become an artist first. Then you make yourself in units. Wow. No, he didn't go there. Oh, my goodness. You just tuned in. The Basic Foundation Show going for tonight. Hot Seat Man, put it down. Kevin James. You know what? I got to give a round of applause for Troy for all three of these gentlemen. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me go ahead and do that real quick. Let me do that real quick. Let me, I, I got to put, put it out there. Hold on. Let me, we got to do it again. Got to do it one more time. Got to do it one more time for the people out there. Because this is, this, is, this is awesome, man. Y'all put down some good stuff today. Steve, what you got to say about that, man? Cause he, he just went there, man. Wow. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't even like working with the singers in the studio. Okay. Like, like singers typically don't pull out good songs. You okay. need artists to pull out good songs. And and what is an artist? An artist is when I, when you listen to their material, and when the song is over, do you know who they are? Mm. So. I can hear 20 different versions of Amazing Grace. Right. But a few of them, maybe two or three of them, when they get finished singing Amazing Grace, I can know who they are as an artist. And, and typically singers, and I think that's another issue that we've had in the gospel industry is that we have so many people who are so ridiculously talented. They are so talented that they rely so heavily on their God-given gift, but they don't use their creativity. They don't, it's just all talent. So I'm listening to an album, and I'm listen, listening to the musicians, and the only thing I hear are six re ridiculously talented musicians. But when the song is over, I still don't know who the artist is. I still don't know what was the point you was trying to make. And, and, and I think that's part of the development that, that you're talking about where, okay, you have the gift. Okay, you're in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And another thing is that we got to take this competition out of this thing. Okay. You know, God has made everybody unique in their own right. Everybody, nobody hears something the same way, exactly the same way. Yes, God sir. didn't create it like that. So what happens is, um, as an artist, why am I trying to be like Kirk Franklin? Mm. Like, now, it's cool for me to be inspired by Kirk Franklin. It's cool for me want to pull things out by Kirk Franklin. But come on, if I hear one more track of a choir and everybody's, um, the choir leader is repeating what the choir is getting ready to say, come on, y'all, let's get some creativity in this thing. Like, like we all trying to be somebody else. And I'm like, yo, be, be who you are. Be who God gave you. Let's use some creativity. You know what I mean? 
think about what you were, really sit down and say, wow, wow, how do I, how do I go to the next level? And, and I think, um, and I agree with, um, I, I agree with that guy before what he said is that your home studios are cool. Your home schools are cool because then when you get into the studio to really do your project, you know what to tell the people what they need to do. Yeah. But but you have to be able to, like, for example, um, I have uh, my home studio, but I don't do my mis- mixing and mastering in there. My room is not built for that. Right. But if you don't know anything about how sound bounces off walls, if you don't know about the plugins that you're supposed to use just to take frequencies out and do different things, and then you wonder why your stuff don't sound like the other person. Oh man, why does it don't why does why don't my stuff sound like Rihanna? Oh, oh yeah, okay. Well, you know, Rihanna has Jimmy Duckless mixing her stuff. Right. You, you know, so and I think that all part of that artist development and, and all that comes from there. You know, like like let's let's bring the creativity back. Let's really start getting um, let's try to say, listen, what did God call me to do? And sometimes it's difficult to figure out what God's called you to do. That's why you got to be in the studio doing stuff until you find it. You know, you get people who who are, that's their profession mm-hmm. that will help you find out who you are. You know, and then, and then if they're good, then once they find out who you are, then they'll teach you, well, you might be here. I, I never forget this. Um, I was talking to um, Walter Kearney with um, Perjan, with Jay Moss and them. Right. And I sent him my stuff and everything, and, and he called me back, had a long, great conversation. And, and Walter said, you know what, Stevie? He said, I, he says, the only thing I want to tell you is – leave the art on the wall and give the people what they want. And I was like, huh? He said, leave the art on the wall and give the people what they want. So I was like, what does that mean? He's like, give the people what they want. Once they love you, then start giving them your art. Mm. He says, but coming out, leave the art on the wall. Mm. Leave it on the wall. So part of that artist development is saying that if my genre is pop, well then I may not want to do a shout and beat on my pop track. Okay. That's, <laughs> it's not the right thing to do unless you're going to be ridiculously creative with it. Right. So, so give the pop audience who that's who my audience is. Give the pop audience what they want. And then, then start spoon feeding them what God gave you. You you, you don't always have to do it in just one album. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're good, you can you keep on putting albums out. You know, so that's an awesome awesome uh, uh, insight right there, sir. That, that was great, uh, Troy. What you think? Yeah, and I think what you're saying is right. I mean, it's poor in the gospel industry. I listen to it. Not all, not all um, singers are artists. Not all beat makers are, uh, are producers. Not all managers are managers. Not all um, promoters are promoters. I think a lot of people just do things and they call them something. They call themselves something. They think that's what it is. You have to study anything that you do. You have to study your craft. You, you learn by experience and what you read and what you heard. Um, but um, what you taught, but you you, you have to artists got to get to the mindset of always re- and everybody in the gospel industry always remain a student mm-hmm. because you all when you want you you remain a student you always be able to to learn a lot of people think that because because a lot of teachers and pastors and then we know pastors when they get they get to a point to think they know everything but they they don't get to, they they don't get to the fact um, the fact to keep keep learning. We learn something every day. You read the Bible, you learn something different every day. So always remain a student. And so you, so in your mindset as a student, you're always willing to learn more. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of things, a lot of people I talk to, they think they know everything. And when they get on the phone with me, 
Like, wow, I didn't know that. Well, sometimes I used to take people for granted thinking they knew because they, they, they put themselves on this pedestal and they get on the phone and toot their own horn. And then once you have a conversation, a promoter to promoter, they don't have a clue. Or talk about artist development, they don't have a clue. Talking to an artist about difference between sex, they don't have a clue. And then I realized a lot of these people just take these titles because they see what the secular world is doing, but they're not educating themselves, not going to school, not doing certain things. Um, you know, they ain't going to take that time to call somebody and say, look, Troy, or teach me this. You know, I'll pay you 50 bucks just to tell me to learn about do some consulting. I'm not always about the money. If I was all about the money, I wouldn't be on basic foundation, but industry frustration, and, you know, on today, mm-hmm. trying to teach and educate. Don't take things that we're telling you for granted. You know, if you took, if you listened to this interview and you didn't have a pen and a pad and you didn't write this something, you didn't write this stuff down, it's telling me you didn't want to learn anything. Mm. You, 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 you absorb what we said, but tomorrow you can't retain everything that we taught you. Yes, so take a paper and pencil and write things down when you when you go places, you go to these conferences. Take a pen and a paper and write things down. All the, I always make sure when I go up. In these conferences, and I give a good, I, I, I give it to them raw, give it to them good, and give it to them spiritually. And I, you know, I know I'm good in where I am because once I get up on the podium, I watch what everybody else is do. When I get up and when I give a word, I want to make sure I have more people pens and paper out more than anybody else on there because I want to know I did my job what I called me to do. It's not a competition thing, but I know. When God installs what he, he, the word in me, and I go out there and release it, I want to make sure people got their pins and pads out and writing things down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I do myself every day because me giving out information, I want to give out the right information, and, I, and, and, and we want the artists to grow. That's good stuff. Well, wow. If you just tuned in, y'all, you, I'm telling you, the Basic Foundation Show new installment the first installment i should say of the series called the truth about the music industry we get the truth tonight (laughs) y'all we get the truth i've never heard it before well i am about to end the show in just a few moments but first i'm going to go down the list as we always do let people know who you are and what you do so first i'm going to start with our special guest this evening i thank you for coming on steve johnson x music tell us a little bit about your ministry and what you do sir um um, EX Music is spelled EX Music with a Q. Um, we are a um, contemporary Christian group um, specializing in the sound of um, pop and hip hop with, um, uh, I say, a little touch of the um, um, rhythm and praise sound. Mm-hmm. Um, we can be followed on um twitter again with ex music with a q we're on facebook ex music with a q social um on instagram social cam all the social um networking things the same way same spelling um we got some projects coming out we're getting ready um we already dropped a um single for our christmas album and we'll be releasing a full album within about a week and a half we have a mixtape coming out the um first quarter of um, 2014, and by the summertime of 2014, um, um, we'll be releasing our um, album. Um, so we, we on, on the grind, you know, if um, anybody wants to reach us for booking, you can reach us at exmusic at gmail.com. Good stuff. I'm going to go to Kevin James. Uh my name is Kevin James, program director at CJB Radio. That's at www.cjbradio.com. That's it for me, man. That's the man right there, Troy Edwards. It's the forward boy, Mr. Industry, Mr. Indy Mogul, um, Mr. Do a Lot. Um, you know, you, you can find us at uh, Twitter, uh, 3HP Records, and uh, Facebook, 3HP Records. And email us at 3HP Records at Gmail. So everything we do is 3HP Records. We do marketing promotions and everything. But we also, um, you know, basically um, leaders in, in, in the kingdom 
to, to help people to get where they need to be and, and, and guidance of what God is calling them to do. We, we want them to fulfill their dreams and fulfill the, the mission that God's called them to do. Hey, man, TC. Hey, this is TC, y'all. Uh, we got WOGS 103.9. FM, we'll be taking the limits off uh, www.wgs1039fm.com. Also, you can catch us with JFJ Live Talk Radio. Our Twitter is at JFJ Live Radio. Again, that's at JFJ Live Radio. That's James Frank John Live Radio. Also, uh, of course, on Facebook, TC Congress, uh, JFJ Live Talk Radio fan page and fam group. You can join us there as well, and we'd love to. Go ahead and reach out to you and uh, just have you part of the family. But, gentlemen, this has been an awesome show thus far. I didn't want to keep going because we got to say something for part two. God bless you. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? I mean, my goodness. God I'm bless. like, I'm blown away. I, I want to be an artist now. Shoot, all this information that went forth tonight. <laughs> I get my saying on to something. <laughs> but uh but you know what it's always great to have a platform like this because i did want to go ahead and uh talk about the truth about the music industry there's a lot of other great shows out there shots out and i give shots out because i'm that type of dude the let's talk gospel they're doing an awesome job with their show and other shows that's like ours that we actually uh you know i'm actually glad to see that other people are trying to you know give out information as well to try to help artists out as well cause that's what i'm all about helping and bringing unity and see the potential in others to bring that out. So I definitely love what everybody else is doing out there. They are doing other shows. So I give you kudos and shots out, and I pray that y'all continue to keep the vision speaking, as I like to say, as well. But the Basic Foundation Show is back. We're going to be going forth on the truth about the music industry part two. Steve, you can come back next week, man, on next Monday. We'd love to have you, I would you, man. love to. I would love to. And uh, we, we, I'm, I'm trying to get some special guests on on the next one so we can actually get deep into it. It might be a two- or three-hour show like we had previously, but um, I'm really really excited about this series, and I know it's going to be a lot of truth come out in regards to uh, art. I, I really want to focus on artist development and marketing because I think that's gotcha. what's lacking, lack, excuse me, lacking right now in today's mm-hmm. music industry. Uh, with the uh, digital download age, as we know, you know, it's taken over from what we used to do back in the day when CDs and cassettes and eight tracks yeah. and albums was out. So it's a whole different uh, industry right now, if you will. So we're definitely going to focus on that on part two. And uh, you will be, uh, you know, I will be playing this back uh, uh, throughout the week. I think I'm going to play it for the rest of the week so artists can really get in their spirits and let them know that, hey, you know, we can, uh, you know, let it go. I think I'm going to play it at our 12 o'clock hour when JFJ Loud Talk Radio come on the station. If Kevin, you want to play it on your station, of course, you're welcome to it, sir. Um, sure, man. Sure. And, uh, me. Yeah, I definitely want to get this information out, man, because uh, I hear a lot of stuff that's not always the truth, and that's why I wanted to go ahead and say we're going to talk about the truth, and of course we'll have more guests on. So I'm really excited about this series, gentlemen. And I want to thank you once again, all you guys, for taking out your time, out your busy schedule to actually be a part of this, to actually help me unify with the artists and try to help them out. I definitely appreciate you all. Well, thank you so much, man. Honestly, thank you, thank you for giving the opportunity. Praise God, man. Yeah. And uh, we're going to keep the vision speaking, man. So next Monday, part two of the truth about the music industry. And uh, I want to have some secular people on as well, y'all. I'm going to have some secular people on as well. I'm trying to really get – I got a few artists lined up that I'm really working on, very excited about having on that actually been in music for years. And I'm trying to get on. And, um, you know, to join the conversation and actually give us more insight because I'm always a student. I like to learn more things. I'm sure you gentlemen like to learn more things as well. So, Absolutely. Um, I think that we definitely want to make sure that happens, sir. So uh, I thank you all for coming on. And we're about to sign out for the evening. The Balance of Love is coming up next. we got a commercial break coming up. But the Balance of Love, you like